Hello guys, hope your quarantine days are going good and all of you are doing fine. This is Dr. Mamta Patel from Team MDS Conquer. We'll be talking about TMJ, anatomy and approaches today in this video. What is TMJ? TMJ is a temporomandibular joint which means very low to the dentist. Not only to the dentist but also to the surgeons as well. The TMJ joint is a very complex joint. What makes it very complex? The macroscopic and microscopic anatomy of the TMJ and different muscular forces acting on it in various directions helps in movements such as opening, closing, intrusion, extrusion, lateral excursion makes the joint very complex. And this TMJ joint works on a class 3 liver mechanism. What is class 3 liver mechanism? Class 3 liver mechanism where fulcrum is eccentric away from the effort in the resistance arm. So here in the temporomandibular joint, the condyle acts as a fulcrum and the biting force, whatever we are biting, makes an effort arm and the muscular force is acting on it, acts as a resistance arm. TMJ is a jinglimo-arthroidal joint. The term which is derived from the jinglimus, meaning a hinge joint, allowing motion in backward and forward direction in one plane and arthroidia, meaning a joint which permits gliding motion of the surface. So this gliding motion of the surface occurs in the superior compartment of the joint and the hinge movement occurs in the inferior compartment of the joint. Basics of TMJ Bilateral diarthrosis, right and left joint functions together. The articular surface here are covered by fibrocartilage instead of hyaline cartilage. It is the only joint in the human body to have rigid endpoint closure, that of teeth making an occlusal contact. In contrast to other diarthroidal joints, TMJ is the last joint to start develop, that is in about 7 weeks in utero. What are the components of TMJ? Components of TMJ include mandibular condyle, the articulating surface of the temporal bone, the capsule, the articular disc, the ligaments and the muscular components. So here in the picture from inferior to superior we have the condyle. First the condyle, immediately superior to condyle, we have articular disc. It is very important for the smooth functioning of the joint. This articular disc is a biconcave shaped structure which is present between the glenoid fossa and the condyle. So anteriorly this disc is supported by the superior belly of digastric and posterior it is supported by the retrodiscal lamina or bilaminar zone which contains a smooth soft tissue pad which is highly innervated. So this articular disc divides the joint cavity into superior compartment and the inferior compartment. Whole of the joint is covered by the capsule from outside. What are the attachments? What are the three main ligaments of the TMJ? The collateral ligaments, capsular ligaments and the temporomandibular ligaments and the accessory ligaments includes spinomandibular and stylomandibular ligament. The right picture is the sagittal section of the TMJ showing the condyle inferiorly and the articular disc between the mandibular fossa and the condyle. There is a synovial membrane lining the interior cavity. And the left side picture shows the coronal section of the TMJ showing the lateral collateral ligaments and medial collateral ligaments near the medial and the lateral pole of the condyle. Imaging OPG Most commonly 2D picture available that can be made available is OPG which is very cost effective as well. Any, any bony pathology or any trauma can be easily appreciated in the OPG. PAV is not commonly advised only trauma. During trauma you can advise PAV. Arthroscopy this is the most advanced technology available to look into the joint space that is inside the capsule. Even the microscopic structure can be seen with the arthroscopy. CT scan. Any bony pathology, the 3D picture, the 3D extension of the pathology can be easily appreciated with the CT scan. So any bony pathology, CT scan is the gold standard. And MRI scan. Any soft tissue pathology inside the capsule can be easily appreciated with MRI scan. So intracapsular lesions or any intracapsular pathology, MRI is the gold standard for soft tissue lesions. Coming to approaches of TMJ, 
different types includes preauricular submandibular intra oral postauricular and oral horizontal incision along the lower border of the malar arch right erectomy incision through soft tissue laceration or the scars accessibility the approach to the tmj depends on the area that need to be accessed and avoiding the nerves and the vessels that comes in between and if any interpositional graft needs to be taken or whether the joints need to be reconstructed so taking into consideration all of these things you decide which approach needs to be taken so here in the picture the preauricular approach provides access to the condylar head till the neck okay, residence approach provides accessibility to the posterior border of the ramus of the mandible from the subcondylar region to the angle of the mandible and the hinds approach provides accessibility from the neck of the condyle to mid of the ramus but right erectomy approach provides accessibility from the condyle to the angle of the mandible there are the various incisions the blaze inverted hockey stick incision in the preauricular clase which is angulated superiorly and the thomas angulated incision which is angulated at 45 degrees ang angle superiorly the dingman incision lies in the preauricular crease and oral incision the incision is extended more anteriorly into the coanal cartilage of the ear popovich crane it is a modification of preauricular incision that is made in a question mark shape so that it will be more aesthetic the superior extension of the lesion goes in the hairline the posterior auricular incision made behind the ear to avoid injury to the facial nerve so these preauricular incisions whatever are made anterior to the auricle has potential of damage to the facial nerve so taking into consideration the postauricular incision was made in the post ramal and submandibular incision submandibular incision is made below the lower border of the mandible and the post ramal incision is made behind the posterior border of the ramus of the mandible i'll get bramley is a question mark shape incision which is and modification of preauricular incision which goes in the hairline the vertical components is made as close to the trigger as possible this incision was made taking into consideration the branching of the superficial temporal artery and the branching of the facial nerve that is the nerve to the muscles of the facial expression which is very important for the face taking aesthetic consider aesthetic into consideration the question mark shape incision is lies on the hairline inside the hairline so what will, what will the layers layers which you, you come across in the preauricular incision first the skin then subcutaneous tissue then comes the temporoparietal fascia that is superficial fascia then comes the superficial fascia of the temporalis fascia then comes the zygomatic arch so at the zygomatic arch make in 45 degree incision and cut the superficial layer of the temporalis fascia superficial layer of the temporalis fascia and the periosteum on the zygomatic bone and slide down near the external auditory meatus to reach the joint so the periosteum along with the superficial layer of the temporalis fascia is reflected the dissection goes between the cartilage in the external auditory canal and the glenoid lobe of the parotid the joint capsule is visualized and the temporomandibular joint is entered and oral approach and oral approach has three parts part 1 2 and 3 part 1 it is an anterior and oral incision in the superior meatal wall the outward incision for 3 to 5 mm at the coronal cartilage part 2 extends from the superior extension of the end oral incision directly upwards to a point half way between the meatus and the upper edge of the auricle 
द पार्ट थ्री इट्स इज अ कंटिन्यूशन सुपीरियरली इन द इंटर कार्टिलेजनस क्लेफ्ट एंड बिकम्स द फेशियल पोर्शन आफ्टर दैट द लेयर्स वुड बी सेम एज द प्रियोरिकुलर अप्रोच पोस्ट ऑरिकुलर अप्रोच दिस पोस्ट ऑरिकुलर अप्रोच वॉज मेड टेकिंग इन टू कंसिडरेशन पोटेंशियल फॉर डैमेज टू द फेशियल नर्व सो एडवांटेज विद द पोस्ट ऑरिकुलर अप्रोच वॉज एक्सटेंसिव एक्सेसिबिलिटी एस्पेशली द पोस्ट ईयर एंड लेटल पार्ट रिडक्शन इन फेशियल नर्व डैमेज देर वॉज नो एक्सेसिव ब्लीडिंग सो डिसएडवांटेज वॉज लिमिटेड एंटीरियर एक्सेसिबिलिटी परफोरेशन ऑफ द कार्टिलेज इन इज एक्सटर्नल ऑडिटरी मियाटस and the external auditory canal stenosis and infection the chances of infection were very high with the post auricular approach resident sensation resident sensation is made a two finger breadth below the angle of the mandible parallel to the lower border of the mandible it lies between the cervical branch of the facial nerve the lower boundary of the bony external auditory meatus at least 3 cm inferior so what are the layers which come which we come across in the residents incision the skin fat then comes the platysma then the outer layer of the deep cervical fascia where the facial nerve lies anteriorly you will find the facial artery and facial vein that it needs to be ligated so identify the angle and the body of the mandible the masseter and the periosteum are dissected out the parotid capsule is turned upwards what are the indications of residents approach used for subcondylar procedures severe bony ankylosis direct condylar fixation and the costochondral grafting advantage is less chance of facial nerve damage disadvantage is inadequate accessibility increased deflection and traction of the tissue is required temporary paresthesia may be present hines approach was developed by hines and w j garrotten in the year 1967 the slight upward tilt of the head the space between the sternocleidomastoid and the ascending ramus is identified the incision is made parallel to the posterior ascending ramus at a distance 2 cm starting from 2.5 cm vertically below the gonian angle and extending upwards along the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid to about a length of 3.5 cm so layers in the hines approach you will find skin fat then comes a platysma then snip of the investing fascia of the deep cervical fascia what are the structures are you will encounter here the posterior part of the parotid gland with the fascia the ascending ramus the deep part of the angular tract and the retromandibular vessels indications of the hines approach for condylar neck fractures for condylotomy vertical ramus osteotomies advantage includes less chance of damage to the facial nerve disadvantage includes reduced accessibility and paresthesia of the facial nerve damage to the retromandibular vessels coronal incision this incision provides very high accessibility when both tmj joints need to be assessed and both sides the graft need to be taken that is temporalis muscle or facial graft need to be taken this coronal incision is given this incision follows the hair line about 4 cm behind it so depth till the subglial loose tissue inferior extension continues as a preauricular incision okay blunt dissection to reflect the flap till 2 cm above the intraorbital rim and the superior temporal line the pericardium is in size about 3 to 4 cm superior to the orbital rim not to extend on the superior temporal line incision of the alkyl bramley is continued after that indication indication for bilateral exposure extensive exposure required advantage is good exposure easy to get the facial phase and reduction of damage to the facial nerve branches and the scar is hidden disadvantage bleeding in initial phase as the scalp is heavily innervated or heavily supplied by the blood vessels 
the bleeding is very high in the coronal approach extensive dissection is required not aesthetic in completely bald patients coming to right hysterectomy incision it is a variant of retromandibular approach yeah, it is in combination of preauricular approach and the retromandibular approach we can say that incision is 1.5 to 2 cm superior to the level of the zygomatic arch in the posterior aspect of the ear so inferiorly it blends with the preauricular incision anteriorly depth of the incision should be till the subcutaneous tissue the platysma is dissected with a blunt scissor expose the retromandibular tissue and parotid retract the parotid to visualize the pterygomacetrix sling incise it at the posterior border of the mandible near the ankle to reflect the flap along the ramus anteriorly indication where aesthetic is of concern an extensive exposure is required the cytotectomy exposure is indicated advantage includes less chances of damage to the facial nerve it provides very good exposure disadvantage is added time required during surgery now this is then uh, this is the completion of the approaches to the tmj any doubts any questions you are free to ask contact dr shri from my contact number and i thank team mds conquer for giving me opportunity to talk on tmj this was my first video guys the suggestions are welcome thank you thank you everyone keep studying